Hello everyone. Hello. And welcome back to another video. Amen. Hey John, my beautiful, lovely wife. Mm -hmm. Come on. My lovely husband. Come on. And today we're going to be continuing part two of our Q&A that we did last week. Was it? Yeah. Oh, last week? No, three two days, days ago. ago. Mm -hmm. um, we thought we were going to finish it all in that episode, but clearly there too were too many, many questions. questions. So mm -hmm. we're going to finish it all today, hopefully. You guys asked some amazing questions, so we're going to have the Holy Spirit to lead us and to answer all these Amen. things. Amen. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. So the first one is how to handle seeing the person you want to get back with if God is saying not now. Mm. I feel like some practical ways to help with the situation. Obviously, when we broke up, we still went to the same church. Yeah. And that made it really, really difficult and very, very awkward. And it's like, I feel like one of you has to make the sacrifice of stepping back. Because I feel like there's a time where you... Did you step I wasn't. A bit? Yeah, I wasn't really. I wasn't like going. attending many. I things. wasn't really. Yeah, if I knew she was going to be there, I wasn't really going. Yeah, I spent most I knew of my he time. If I going to be there, yeah, I wouldn't go. So it's like, for a season, unfortunately, you're gonna have to separate from that from that environment from that place just to save yourself. Because we always say you can't heal in the same place where you were broken. Yeah. So how are you meant to be healing from someone, and you're gonna break up with someone, but you see them constantly? You don't. It's like you're not able to heal fully yeah so i do recommend even if, even if it is a church you can step back from the church for a bit either you or him mm. step away for a bit if you're not communicate communication then you should step back mm. and allow that space between you both so you don't constantly see each other if you work together i know it's a bit tricky because that's your literally your job yeah <laughs> so i understand that so when it comes to that when you literally can't physically change the situation or you can't change the environment that you're in i think you should have accountability and ask people to you know to understand your situation and put boundaries in place so mm. you know that they're not going to put you in the same team or you know when it's lunchtime, people are like no you shouldn't be sitting in him because yeah. like, he's going to come in the room right now or she's about to come so you know just ha having people know about situations that like, will actually help you a lot yeah to like put that distance even in the same environment that's good sense. that's good yeah, man. and to go along with that, the person also asked how to find balance between seeking healing and transformation mm. and patience. So the best way to answer this is to get a vision because the Bible says, well, mm. where there's no vision, the people perish. That's good. Meaning, if you've got a vision from God, this is not, I don't mean like a physical vision, like you've just had a dream or you've seen something. I mean a word from God saying that you need to heal, daughter. Mm. You need to be transformed. You need to let me remove all the baggage, all the insecurities, mm. all the trauma, all the trust issues. Come on. If, that, if God's given you that vision for yourself to become a healed version of yourself, to become a transformed version of yourself, yeah. then that's your vision. So if you have a vision, you know that you've got to stick with that and you've got to keep your eyes and like, keep, keep focus on that. Yeah. You can't be looking around being like, oh, well, you know, the, I can go out um, clubbing with my friends. I can go do this and this. I get distracted. No, you cannot be distracted. Mm. You've got to keep your eyes on the goal. You've got to keep your eyes on the vision. Yeah. And that's what the Bible says. Well, there's no vision people pray. Because if you don't have that vision, if you don't have that thing that God said, this is, how, this is how I want you to become. Mm. In order to get here, you must do A, B, C, and D. Yeah. So you know what you need to do. But if you don't have a vision, you're going to be like, oh, well, you know, I want to be healed. I want to have a good relationship in the future. I want to do this and this and this. But I don't know the vision, so I'm just going to stay here and stay stagnant. Come on. So get a vision from the Lord. Ask him, well, who do you want me to become? Mm. What is my purpose? What, am I, what is my mission in life? What yeah. is my assignment for my yeah. life? And when it gives you that bomb, you're gonna know exactly what you need to do. Right. You're, gonna, you're not gonna compromise anymore. You're right. not gonna settle anymore. Right. And you're not gonna be. You're not gonna feed into the distractions that are cool. around you anymore. Come on. So. And I, I agree with that because while while I was going through my healing and transformation season, uh, one thing that God told me is, people are waiting on your breakthrough for their breakthrough exactly. and obviously at the time i didn't understand but now i understand like as i'm making this video you're watching this as a result of me just realizing mm -hmm. you know i need to stay in that healing i need to i need to allow myself to be transformed and i need to be patient mm -hmm. i need to wait on god because if i'm able to do this god's way i know that my breakthrough will bring will bring about um, other people's breakthrough yeah. right so you wouldn't be healing right now if I wasn't just patient and allow God to transform mm -hmm. and to transform me and be be not you know to heal me and we both did the same thing so now mm -hmm. you guys are benefiting from the fact that we just allowed God to do that so let that be an encouragement you know that someone is waiting on their breakthrough mm -hmm. if you allow God to cause you your breakthrough That's good. Uh, next question how do you get over a crush find out they had a girlfriend and they didn't tell me Eesh. Right. I'm sorry to hear that. Right. There's a Bible verse, right? And Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. And in John chapter 7, verse 24, he says, Look beneath the surface. Mm. Uh, look beneath the surface so that you can judge correctly. Mm. What happens is 
we get in situations in situationships uh as a result of lack of discernment mm. lack of understanding lack of um, lack of being patient you know lack of looking mm. beneath the surface because what that tells me is if you didn't know that person was in a whole relationship it's because you were looking above the surface mm. most likely you guys you, you know you're probably still dealing with some things or they was probably still dealing with some things and though and you guys you know what attracted you is the problems and the traumas and the bonds that you had in common mm. and not just that so now instead of you giving it nine months like we've been talking in our, in our series if you're not uh read our, uh, watched our series please go back and watch it all mm -hmm. if you're not given nine months to really get to know the person and see their fruits and look at their fruits that means you know you only got to know them and you probably already started to get involved with them in the first few weeks yeah. well no wonder you found out now that they've got a whole girlfriend yeah. and now you're struggling right so our advice is start looking just like jesus said in, in john chapter 7 verse 24 mm -hmm. stop looking above the surface look beneath yeah. you know really see look well, allow time get to know them get to know their family get to know before you join with people so yeah. let this be a learning lesson before you even catch feelings for the person mm. get to know their behavior their pattern mm. so basically stop we have to stop looking above the surface what's above the surface oh they look fine let me get with them no we have to be a generation we look beneath the surface like mm -hmm. just like jesus get to know someone get to really get in before you make a commitment mm -hmm. because the second most important decision in your life is the person that you choose to marry and the person that you choose to do life with That's right. uh so yeah uh how do you get over it you will get over it yeah. <laughs> don't worry you know you know just just let the day it's, you know it's painful now but yeah Trust me, in a few months time, club you're never gonna care. Before, yeah. And really, you're like, oh, as if I actually waste my time on that on that guy. Trust exactly. Me. Just believe me. <laughs> and you just you you dodged a bullet because if um because if they were willing to entertain you while they had a whole girlfriend you didn't know, how much more if you become their girlfriend, they're gonna entertain other people exactly without you knowing mm. and without they knowing. Yeah. So you dodged a bullet, and I hope That's that perspective good. change helps you to heal as well. Mm how to know after nine months if the person has actually changed mm. if you haven't talked you'll be watching our series about the nine months so yeah nine, yeah come on yeah, man. um so how to know if the person has actually changed so i think i mentioned this in the series but you shall know a man by their fruit you should know a tree by their fruit so yeah. an apple tree isn't going to start producing oranges mm. right it's not going to start producing bananas right. an apple tree will produce apples the same way a person who is a, a person who's been chasing God will produce godly fruits. Mm. The fruits of the spirit. They're gonna be gentle, patient, kind, they're gonna have self control, they're gonna be disciplined, they're gonna yeah. be very respectful, very yeah. honorable. Yeah. You can tell that God is first in their life. Mm. You can tell that they, their priorities are right, they're set straight, and they're not gonna be settling for less, they're not gonna be mm. distracted easily. You know, where where do you, where are you finding them? Are you finding them in church or you find mm. them all the time with their friends, with their boy mates, you know, playing Xbox all the time, playing PlayStation, <laughs> like you shall know them by his fruit and that's yeah. the best answer. What is, what are his his patterns, what are his behaviours? Is he still the same person that he was when you guys broke up? Mm. Or is he changed now to the point where you're literally like, I don't even recognise this man right. but in the best way possible. Amen. Amen. And I feel like we actually mentioned this uh, in how to know if you should get back, mm. right? Because yeah. it and it, and how to know if you shouldn't get back. If you really, because I know you've watched it, but if you really go back and really take notes, you'll understand that everything that we mentioned should there should be enough for you to mm. be able to know if the person has changed or not. And okay, let me give you this, right? Let's say after the nine months, Gabriella hadn't changed because mm. I would have been looking at her fruits. I'd be looking, you know, what? Because mm. obviously after I changed, you know, I, I was like, my mindset was like, you know what? Let me just follow God, right? Yeah. God gave me a word, but this is this is this is now personal. This is based on what I what we went through. God gave me a word that she would be the one. If she hadn't changed after the nine months, mm. do you know what I would do? I would continue doing what God called mm. me to do. You know, God gave me a few, inf yeah. few, a few tasks, tasks to do because once you get deep in God, He starts to reveal your purpose. Once I realized, once I understood my purpose, I was gonna spend. However, I told God, even if I have to wait for the for the next ten years, I'm willing to wait just doing my purpose and doing what you've mm. called me to do. So that's what I would have done. I would have just continued doing my life, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then this is one of the, this would have been one of the signs for me to move on, right? Mm. Um, uh, if she had married someone, even if she got with someone, it's fine. The moment she married someone, I would have moved on. Mm. I'm like, you know what, God? 
okay, yeah, I've accepted it. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would be willing to wait because true faith, um, true faith, I, I was hearing the pastor say this, true faith is not, you know, you have, you can have faith for nine months mm -hmm. or faith for nine years or faith for, you know, 20 years. No, true faith is when you die believing. Mm -hmm. You know, Abraham died believing for the promise that God told yeah. him. Yet it was only it was only fulfilled 400 years later. So after he died, mm. was God's promise fulfilled in his life? So it's just having that you know forever faith, you know yeah. forever belief, forever there's no strength. Day on her expiry, yeah, there's no day on it. No, you just believe in God entirely. So that's just an advice, you know, Absolutely. just in case it brings some clarity. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Um, did you did you have low energy like every day and didn't want to talk to anyone? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We've been there for yeah. sure. Yeah. Especially like in the first few weeks, I was so low. I was mm. so depressed. I didn't eat. I didn't want to talk to anyone. Mm. And I was actually home alone for the for the first three weeks of our breakup because my parents had gone on holiday. Mm. So I I was actually pretty glad because I was like, frankly, I, I don't have to talk to anyone. I could just be by myself in my house and just be depressed by myself <laughs> with God. <laughs> but um. Yeah, I didn't want to talk to anyone. The only person I did want to talk to was God. He was the only person that I actually cried out to every single day that I prayed to. Mm. And yeah, he was only yeah, he was my only source of comfort in that time. So it is normal. But yeah. there is a time where it has to stop. Because I just as the Bible says in Ecclesiastes three, there's a time there's a to time. mourn. Yeah. And there's a time to laugh. And Amen. There's a time to heal. Amen. You know, there's a time to cry, there's a time to laugh. So um go through these, go through the motions, cry it all out. You know, you're going to go for a time of just gathering your emotions. And there's going to be so many things you have to think about. But once you've gathered all your emotions, once you realize, yes, I've been cheated on now. Mm. I can't stay in this place for too long. i got to get up. This is a place where you've got to pack your bags emotionally, okay? <laughs> you pack your bags and say, okay, I ain't staying here anymore. I ain't staying in this place of depression anymore. I ain't staying in this place of anxiety anymore. Mm. I'm not going to stay in this place of overthinking anymore, feeling mm. rejected, abandoned, mm. betrayed. I ain't staying here anymore. I'm going to pack my bags and leave mm. and go to my place of healing. Mm. And go to the land where God is going to... Gonna go speak so fast. But God is gonna provide me the healing, the nourishment, the refreshment, yeah. the rejuvenation, the restoration that I need. Yeah. So pack your bags and get to the area. Mm. So don't stay there for too long because if you stay stay for stay there for too long, the devil's gonna grab you and he's gonna start to make you do things that you shouldn't be doing basically. Mm. And he's gonna fill your mind with so many lies, so many deception of why would God allow this to happen? If God is so good, why would he allow you to go for his heartbreak? Why would he make mm. you lose the person that you love so much? Mm. And he's gonna fill with this rubbish because if you stay for too long, that's what he's gonna do. So yep. pack your bags and leave to the place of healing. Yeah, and one practical way as well is uh, we all have to have at least one person, all of us, at least one person that is spiritually led, you know, that loves God. And you can trust them and they have your best interests at heart. Yeah. I would advise you to talk to them. Because mm. the Bible says in James chapter 5 verse 16, confess your sins to one another so that you may be healed. Yeah. You know, reveal and confess your baggages. Reveal and confess your traumas. Yeah. Reveal, and reveal and confess your, your, your experiences. And you will experience healing as you do that. Yeah. Okay. So what other, made you not think about the person and how long did it take you to completely heal? I think it's pretty inevitable to just, to stop thinking about the person. Like, it's impossible to say, I'm not going to think about the person anymore. It's literally, I, I'm not saying it's impossible because God can do all things, but yeah. when you're just going for a breakup, you're just being cheated on, you're going for a heartbreak, it's the only thing that, that you revolve your mind mm -hmm. on. Like, it's, you wake up thinking, oh, I can't believe this happened to me. You go to bed thinking, wow, did this happen to me? Yeah. So it's okay to always think about the person because it's it's inevitable you know mm. this person was your best friend it was your soulmate it was the person you thought you're going to do the rest of your life with so but i so it's not about forgetting about the person it's about replacing that person mm. and hopefully replacing that person with god because once you're in the bible your mind is distracted mm. but in a good way you're thinking yeah. only about god you're thinking about jesus you think about his promises yeah. his, his the, the comfort that he gives you for his word mm. the minute you step out mm. of the bible you're thinking oh, mm. Jack did this or oh, Stephen did that so like you're gonna the minute you step out of God's presence mm. you are gonna get consumed with all the thoughts wow. the minute you step out of God's presence you are gonna start thinking yep. about that person yep. but the minute you step into God's presence and into his mm. word it's gonna distract your mind and just close off and mute all the voices and the minute you go into God's word you will you'll never leave the same to when you came in if that makes sense yeah yeah yeah, that yeah. Makes sense? yeah. yeah. So. and that's exactly what I did as well right I remember 
every time I'd, I'd be spending time with God, and like, I'd be reading my word, I'd be worshiping, I'd be praying, I'd be talking to other people about the word of God, or I'd be watching preachers mm. or podcasts, right? Um, it's like I'd come out of that place. Mm. But then the moment it finished, and the moment I'd stop, all of a sudden I start thinking about everything. And it's just like uh, one thing that Pastor Jerry always always says is, he, he says, the cure to overthinking, overthinking about everything that you've mm. been going through and whatever, is to do the opposite. Think over. Yeah. Meaning, think over God's promises. Think over, you know, what God can do through this pain. Think over, yeah. um, you know, how good God is. So think over, reading over mm. his word, you know, by washing yourself with. Yeah. That's why the Bible says in Romans 12, chapter 1 to 2, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Right now, your mind is in one place. So you need to, uh, you need to allow it to be transformed by the renewal of your mind, yeah. by, by focusing on things of God. Because that's how you start transforming and start getting yourself from that mm -hmm. from that thought pattern to where exactly where you're meant to be. Yeah. Now, for us, we didn't, you know, we didn't, we didn't, we can't say like we're completely 100% fully healed, right? We can't say that. But what's happened is there is a foundation of healing. Mm. There is a foundation when, when you feel firm, like when certain things are mentioned, certain things are brought up and you, you don't easily mm -hmm. fall, right? That's that foundation of healing. And that, for me personally, it came after 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 the nine months, and let me tell you why. Because uh, there's another question that people are asking, and I feel like th this this will answer mm -hmm. it. But this is how I knew I was healed, right? Yeah. Uh, or at least I had that foundation. Even though I knew God said to, that she would be the one, I was willing to wait, and I was even willing to just, even if I was single for the rest of my life, to just be with God, me myself, and God alone. So I was willing to not even. To, I was willing to be okay with her not ever coming back mm -hmm. to my life, even though God said she would come back into my life. Yeah. That's how I knew I was healed. Amen. When the blessing is not more an idol in my life, but the blesser is an idol. Mm. When I appreciate and love the one who blesses more than the blessing itself. That's how I knew I was healed. Mm. And that's how you can know you're healed. Amen. I'm going to say how I knew I was healed. Um, I knew I was healed when I could forgive the person completely. When mm. I could look at them in the face and not see the pain they caused me. When I could look mm. Ricky in the face and not see cheating, liar, mm. betrayal. I looked at him in the face and said, you're a child of God. Mm. And that's good. That's, what I, that's the minute I knew I was healed. And even, actually, when you can say like he cheats, he cheats on you with a girl, when you can look at that girl in the face, and, and say I forgive you that's good that's how you know you're healed and it will take a while because obviously you need God to, to heal all the broken areas that's and good. You know, bind up all the wounds mm. in your heart yeah yeah but when you get to the point where you can forgive the girl that he cheated on you with and the cheater and say I forgive you mm. that's how you know you're healed <laughs> Communiac. how was the communication during the breakup so we talked about this in the last episode in the last episode but, yeah um Ours was all over the shop, guys. So we we can't really answer this question because I don't want, we I don't want you guys to take this as an answer. It's like in you apply to your relationship or your yeah. situation. If you've broken up, just don't say contact, okay? Yeah. Just say listen. Even if it was a bad breakup or a good breakup, just say listen. I need my time to heal now. I need yeah. time to gather my thoughts. Amen. You go do your thing. I do. I go do mine. Mm -hmm. And if if it's a so I keep speaking so fast, it's so annoying. It's okay. You know. And if it's God's will for us to be together, then we'll come back together Amen. at God's appointed time. Yes, Next question is How do you trust God's plan That a better partner is coming after him Breaking you up for good mm. So I think for this one A perfect verse for that is um, Jeremiah 29 11 Which is for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord Plans to prosper you, prosper you Not to give you harm but to give you hope in the future mm. And I've got that in itself we, Obviously that's such a like popular verse so everyone just like reads it and like yeah thank you lord that's really good <laughs> but actually go deep into that like understand that the lord has good plans for you mm. that when your plan a doesn't work he's got a plan b already planned for you and ricky always loves to say this because you discovered this recently well sorry this is a verse that you've been reading a lot recently mm. and it's god knew you before you was even born mm. god had your life planned out before you was even yeah in your mother's womb yeah, like that's yeah. just actually deep that yeah. so once you grasp that once you understand that you'll mm. understand god has good plans for me he already knows my husband who my husband is he already knows the name of my kids mm. my future kids so once you grasp that you don't care if this relationship ends because you know that whether you get back together or not you know that the next person mm. if you trust god if you take the light in the lord if you trust mm. with all your heart mind and mm. soul you will know that he'll lead you to the right person amen amen because god is good 
So if God is good, that means that everything that he has for you and for your life is good. Yeah. But you have to get to a place where you, you completely understand that and say, you know what, God, I'm going to trust whatever you have for me because mm-hmm. I know what you have for me is good and better than anything that I could ever think, yeah. ask or even imagine. That's right. What does it mean for a man to provide? So, yeah, when it comes to a man providing, a lot of people just think, uh, a man needs to provide financially, but that is not the case. You know, for you to, for a man to become a provider, you need to be able to not just provide financially, but you need to provide emotionally. Yeah. You need to provide spiritually. Can you pray for her? Mm. Can you lead her into God's presence? Yeah. You know, so that's how you become a man that provides, a man that can provide in all areas, right? Yeah. There's basically a scripture that talks about if a man doesn't provide for his family, he's worse than a, than an unbeliever, right? So. You know, um, so even when you look into 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 that verse, you need to be able to provide in all areas, not just financially. Mm-hmm. But you know, God is our Jehovah Jireh; He is our provider. Mm-hmm. So real and true provision is when you go to God to help you provide in all the areas that exactly. need that, for your family and for the the person that you want to be with. Mm-hmm. That's what true provision looks looks like, yeah. not just financially. A lot of men, a lot of men, when we talk about provision. They only think about that financial provision. That that means that God is not their provider. They're yeah. just trying to think about how they can, you get know, the most paid jobs so they can get a nice house and get exactly. all the, the Chanel bags and all these yeah. expensive things, all the luxuries. And then they start thinking that they're doing it in their own power. They're yeah. the ones providing, not realizing in the Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse um, verse eighteen says, "Remember the Lord your God. He is the one that gives you power to mm-hmm. be successful." In other words, God is the one that's giving you power to wake up from that bed. Yeah. Yeah. giving you power and wisdom in order to operate the way you're operating mm-hmm. giving you power to be healed and to have all your limbs working in order for yeah. you to be working in that job so it's only by the grace of god providing for you yeah. in in a in a healthy yeah. you know in a healthy physical way so that you can go and you know make mm-hmm. this money financially so i hope that answers yeah, answer definitely. that question yeah how do you decipher what is your emotions and the voice of god that's really good mm-hmm. so i feel like I love the Bible verse where it says, My sheep shall know my voice. Mm. Obviously, Jesus is our shepherd. God is our shepherd. And right. we are his sheep. So, when you spend time... Oh, actually, I've read this in Samuel, right? Mm. So, there's, there's a, I'll quickly show them summarize it really quickly. So, I'll read one Samuel. And basically, um, Sam was a young boy. And he was in church. And then, basically, he kept hearing a voice say, Samuel, Samuel. So, he ran to the pastor. And he said, Pastor, what's, yeah, what's wrong? Dad, yeah. What's up? Mm. And then Eli was like, no, no, it's not me. Like, I didn't call you. Go back mm. to sleep. Again, Samuel, Samuel, he went back to the bathroom. Eli, Eli, what's wrong? Like, and what, why did you call me again? He said, no, it's not me. Three times, okay, he had Samuel, Samuel. And he kept running back to the pastor. And the pastor was like, listen, next time you hear that voice, say, yes, God, your servant is listening. And then it said, um, Samuel, then it said, the Bible verse after said, Samuel did not recognize the voice of God because he, he hadn't known the word of God yet. Mm. And that was so powerful because it goes to show that in order to know that if it's God's voice, you must be in your word. You must know your word. Because when you know the word, you know God's character. You know his personality. You know the way he speaks. You know that he will never lead lead you into temptation. You know he never tempts you. You know that he never lies. You know that anything that comes from God is always going to be peaceful. There's going to be peace attached to it. There's going to be joy attached to it. There's going to be faithfulness attached to it. And there's a lot of obedience that has to be attached to the word of God, okay? Wow. So it's not going to make you, sometimes it's going to say things that's make, that makes you step out of your comfort zone. Mm. But it's always to, to build you, to, you know, build you up. So my point is, when is your when is your own voice? Obviously, it's really difficult because our voice can sometimes be really deceiving because it's like when the devil whispers these lies, yeah. it's hard because the angel comes, the angel, the devil, the devil comes as an comes, angel of light. Yeah. So he comes dressed up in the word of God and he will recite scriptures to you. So you're like, wait, yeah. is this God or is this this is, you know, the devil. That's how you tempted Jesus. That's how you tempted Jesus. That's how you right. tempted um, Eve, um, Eve. So, when, like I said, when you know the word of God, you will know in your spirit deep down that nah, God will never call me to, to do this. God will never mm. lead me to temptation. Um, you know, whatever thing that comes to you, just just ask yourself, is this going to, like, think long term. Is this going to lead me into temptation? Is this going to steal my joy? Is this going to steal my identity? Or is this going to actually push me further into God's presence? Mm. And that's how you know. Yeah. And, when you when you hear the voice the like, just like she said it has to align with the word of god let's say you hear something but it doesn't align with the word of god then it's not the voice of god mm-hmm. but how do you know if it aligns with the word of god you have to know the word of god and you have to be in it yeah. to understand right and for example 
Uh, in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, it says that all, obviously, v v the verse, verse 28 says, all things work out for the good of those who are called according to God's purpose. And the verse 29 says, so that we can become like Christ, yeah. you know, uh, so that we can become like brothers and sisters among the oldest skin, yeah. which is Jesus Christ. So in other words, whatever voices are you hearing, is that voice going to make you more like Christ? That thing that you're hearing, is that going to make you more like Christ? If it's going to make you more like Christ, most likely it's yeah. the voice of God. Even if it hurts. If it's not going to make you more like Christ, then that's how you know. Amen. That's your emotions. Next question. How to deal with my singleness as a woman in the best way and come out the way of God's desires? Um, there's a series on YouTube called Single and Secure by um, Rich Wilkinson, okay? I don't usually watch um, Rich Wilkinson, but when I was going for my single season, I actually started watching those series, and wow, they are such powerful series that help you address every single area of your singleness, to find peace in your singleness, to mm. enjoy your singleness, and to become single and secure. Because mm. we always say you have to become the one before you get with the one. Mm. But how do you become the one? You got to, you got to enjoy your singleness. You got to mm. become whole in your singleness. You yeah. got to allow God to heal you in your singleness, to yeah. to detach yourself from all the trust issues, to heal all the traumas, to, he mm. to heal heal all the, the childhood issues and parent yeah. issues and all the yeah. generational curses passed down from your parents. Yeah. This is literally the most amazing opportunity right now in the singleness to just sh allow God to strip you of all of your old self and mm. make you a new person and to heal you and heal all the dark areas of your life. Yeah. Find joy in your singleness season, mm. okay? A lot of us rush into marriage, rush into, rush into relationships Ooh, because we're desperate or because we're, we're needy and we're lonely. Mm. But then that relationship ends up hurting us and causing our heartbreak. Then we're like, God, why am I going through this? And God is like, because what I never you told mean? you to get into relationship yet. I didn't, I didn't tell you you was ready you for You decided with yet. your own free will to go and do that thing I exactly. advised you not to do. But when you step back and say, okay, God, <sighs> Your time and not mine. Mm. Only let me get into a relationship when you, when I, when I know that I'm fully healed, I'm fully ready, yeah. and I'm the one before I get with the one. That's it. That's it. And also, like, because basically what she's saying, right? What I hear you say, my my beautiful wife, is that uh, a lot of people want their happily ever after, yeah, but they're not willing to become happily ever before. Talk about it. And it's like. Um, if you're not happily ever before, you're not going to be happily ever after. Because even when you get your happily ever ever after, you're still going to be struggling because you were never happily ever before. Because yeah. you're depending you're depending your happiness on someone rather than depending your happiness on... So everyone, we're going to stop right here because we have so yes. many questions and my camera is about to die any minute now. <laughs> yeah. So yes, it will be a part three, unfortunately. We didn't realize the video is already 15 minutes long. Yeah. So well, anyway, by the time we cut it, it'll be like 45 exactly. minutes. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, hope you all enjoyed this video. Hope yes. these questions and answers really helped you. Mm, but that yeah. being said, God bless you all. God bless Follow you us all. on our socials. Man. We'll be posting all the time. And mm. also, if you want to donate to our ministry, feel free to donate down below. The link down below to our PayPal. Yeah. But yeah. God bless you all. And we'll see you all on, the, see next in the next episode. video. Mm -hmm. And also, um, one of the questions for the next Q&A is actually stuff like, I want them to change. Should I keep praying for them? Mm. And things like that. So I, I feel like it's, it's a nice it's way to round practice. it. Cool. Yeah, surround it and finally close this series out so we're excited to see you on the next video yeah god bless ciao ciao, ciao, ciao.